Good day again. The other day you probably remember we were talking about briefly guarding this. Took it upon myself to make sure that I wasn't going to cause any problems. Then when I started it up, you couldn't see these pieces here. But I still know that they were there. So what I said, well, safety first. It's easy for the coat to get caught up in this here quite easily. You know, even the wind that this creates is chuck. So I come up with a guard. It looks mammoth, but I think it'll do the job very good. There it is. Anyway, I'll whack it on and see what happens. And then we can discuss it. All right. First time I've put it on since I painted it. Then I'll take all the paint off. But paint it red because you are for danger. And uh, that's what it is. It'll slice you up before you know it. Right. Let's get some washes. Back again. What we need. So we'll start off with the hardest one, which is well, second hardest. We just get this one in alignment there. Just screw that one on like that. First time I've used these. This one. I'll reach behind and get the other one on. Now they're all secure, okay, nice and solid, okay, no way am I going to have my clothing cord in there and plus I can get at the uh, faces of these, do dial indicator work or anything like that if I need to. But I usually will set up with the wood first, okay, and I just operate by hand, move the chuck around so I can get the drill behind and drill holes, these holes here for screws that go into bits of wood. You have to fasten the wood in these chucks. A bit too dangerous whirling around by itself. And at least you're protected. You only need to have this guard in this position when the chuck jaws are in this position. Once it's below here, you're relatively safe with it getting caught, but it's just a little bit too long at the moment here. But then again, any protrusion coming out of the chuck is a danger. So I would set the, the job up first, then put this guard over for my safety and everybody else's safety because you can't see this revolving around when it's running, as I'll demonstrate here. First, I'll never spun it first. Make sure it's all clear, which it is. So, you cannot see the bolts. Those there, so someone could come straight in there, walk in, bang, and lean on here and put their hand out and get caught clothing get caught and all that so <clears throat> better be sure than sorry so that what I have done I've chewed up the face so that's pretty accurate now there's a little bit of movement on the circumference but that's not going to affect things very much just chuck the previous person gave it a hard life there's a 
little bumps and bruises and all that on it. I'll clean that all up and make it look good. And uh, <coughs> I'm quite happy how it's come out. This guard, sorry, is very good. Solid. Next, I'm going to I'll make up a put a couple of soft jaws in here, a bit of wood and I'll turn it up to a size and I'll film that so you've got an idea of what's going on and can I use this chuck as it is at the moment we'll soon find out I'll just turn that off I can see a problem straight away we've got this hanging out too far so I have to take that out, put another bolt around the back here, another nut around there and thread a hole through there. So the locking is done from behind. Because if it's not acceptable. Right. And actually be you wouldn't be able to use it properly without struggling so that's another job I've got to do no way little bang here right always something else to do hello everybody back again after about five days had a few problems with this face plate and the biggest problem was yesterday I was filming and I didn't have the switch on so you mixed all the action of me machining up of this surface here and um, unfortunately you missed out on that but it worked very well but for me to get to this point there's a few things I've had to do and um, I'll just move you over, you can start see what I have. Done. We are starting over again because that's what I videoed yesterday. As I said, I was going to have problems with, uh, with the tool post. And uh, the reason why is I could not get it close enough without without hitting the guard here this guard here uh, the front of the tool post I'll take this off here so there's the tool post okay Right. Now I don't know if you can pick up in the GoPro. Yes, you can there in that position. You can see I've got angle here now, which means that's over centre of this point here, which could cause problems. It could cause a little bit of chatter. I do have a little bit of chatter, but it's minimal. But it's only when I'm doing the surface here, when I'm doing doing this edge here. It's very minimal, but if you take less cuts, it's no problems at all. So there you are. Got my angle. I've got my little bracket made up. All pretty. Put that back on. And now, guys, I can push it up against the face. And I've still got a finger gap in between that, uh, between the tool post and the guard. So that's one thing that I've done. What really made me do the alteration is because I have got a tool post to get pretty close, but not close enough. When you're doing big, large diameters and all that, there's much more surface area that you're dealing with. It's too easy for it to dig in. So the closer you can get to your wood, the better. And of course you can see that I've left this spot here and I've put hungry boards on there. Plus I've, um, uh, reduce the width through here 
then put the hungry boards in further so I could machine, which I promised I said I was doing the first, first part of the video. So I progressed and I have uh, done the two surfaces. But before I, 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 I machined this up and I noticed, oh gee, it was really bad. I thought I might be able to get away. So what I did, as I said, is I cut that little section here out. I don't know if you can see it. Whereas this one's level with the top there. This one's not level with the top. It's machined away. So I machined both sides and dropped these hungry boards, these things here, down lower. Glued them in, nailed them in on an angle, the nails. And of course, no trouble at all. And the reason why it does tear out here like that or break off, it, first of all, it's Oregon. But most woods would do that. They would tend to tear or crack in this section here because you're going with the grain, but you're machining across the grain. So there's the grain goes that way, we're machining across there. So Oregon's not very good across the grain, but with the grain, it's very good for structure. That's why they use it. It's a very nice wood to the turn. If you take those things in the favour, a lot of people swear by it and uh, I was very nervous, but I have a fair bit laying around that I can use for jigs and all this, and I thought, yep, great thing, I'll use them. So now I can, I'll put it up like that, nice and close. There you are, nice and close. And now you can go to work. See, I've got a bit of distance here, so you, could you imagine if that was sitting back here, what would happen? The tool would, would definitely, oh, 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 oh. It would definitely dig in, eh? As the first sign. Especially if I'm using this big wide one here. If I'm just cleaning up the surface. And which did happen. Which caused another problem. When they did bite in, I said, that shouldn't have done that. Then what happens is, because of the pressure it exerted against that, and when it grabbed, it broke my draw bar. That's the one that holds the face shut through the spindle of the lathe. It was only a quarter inch and I uh, made improvements and there was nothing I've done. That's why I've been a fair way over time away. The draw bar is stronger, bigger, 5 16 now. That's the maximum I can go. That's the hole that goes through the, uh, the lathe spindle all the way from the front to the back. Now I've got a 5 16 one there and that is solid. Nothing will move that and I've locked the nuts back on really tight. at the. So it's a good fixture now. But actually the quarter inch probably would have done it, but for some no unknown reason I had the wrong size right. It seemed to be about 45 thou smaller than a quarter of an inch. That doesn't give you much thread, I can tell you. On a quarter inch thread, I can tell you that much. So somehow I'd um, overlooked that many years ago when I did make that, but it's last all this time. I use it for Jacob's chuck when I uh, set it up in the tailstock. But anyway, moving on. Let's see, you can machine it up. You say, what the heck is this? Well, what happens is, I'll move the back here. This is one of these projects that, that I've liked preparing when I've got the chance, and this is the chance to prove that this chuck was going to work. So when I come to do it again, no trouble at all. I have been setting it up in the lathe. <coughs> I don't have to make it because I've already made it. Now what happens is the the Wells Fargo or the Concord Coach uh, or the Cobb and Co, uh, Cobb and Co uh, they were named over here in Australia and the Wells Fargo in America and plus there's other companies, a few other companies that uh, run stage coach, the Concord stage coaches. They've got two wheels which are two, two tyres or two wheels that are two different sizes. One's a five inch, so there's the five inch there. From there from there to there and there's the seven inch here now what I do is I cut it out with a bandsaw pretty close and running pretty true and then I leave it on the middle piece of wood and then I come over and then rough cut it sorry I rough cut out the wheel itself but before I rough cut it I use that whole piece of wood with the hole in the center and I'll go over to my machine face over there and with a sanding disc on it which is a very nice sanding disc flat face I'll make up a jig and I'll just turn the wheel and 
oh sorry, uh, machine off the wheel to the outside diameter. So once I've achieved the outside diameter, then I rough cut it out on the inside, and then make sure that I don't run into the five five inch diameter wheel, and then I um, put it in here, machine the width of the wheel to exactly the right width of what I want. So that's all solved. That's why it's three eighths of an inch thick, but that's about a quarter of an inch from there to the first point there. So it'll sit in there nicely and then I'll be able to machine through and I don't have to worry about anything. I will clamp the uh, wheel in those spots there, or press wood across there, over to the face of the of the wheel and no protrusion of the uh, the clamp. That will solve that problem. See, I can get to it, as long as the piece of wood is not hanging out there and won't be interfered by this face here, which is another thing I'd done the other day. You probably saw it was a flat face and it was very hard to get in through the chuck here. And then I thought to myself, well, I would like the, uh, the wood to be protruding out. Now, I'm a little bit off center for some unknown reason. That's why I had to put this back in here. And I didn't want to lose the, the, the shape that I had created. So what I did is I bought it out 25 mil, okay? And I, and what I did, I put some uh, spaces on the back here and nailed and glued them to the, the block of wood. That worked out fine. So it's a little masterpiece, this little thing. The first thing, the first large jig that I've ever had to make. And I'm sure these coaches' wheels are gonna be spot on. I would like to do segmented tires. And that's where you have your main hub, you put all your spokes into the main hub, as you see on wagons, and then you knock them onto segmented sections on the tyre. The tyres are segmented, probably in about 10 pieces, and that way you can get it really look good, nice, and then you just uh, sand the outside diameter of the, the wheel. But no, we're going to do it the long way because we're going to glue those wheels, which is going to take a lot of skill. And I'm looking forward to the challenge to get that wheel spinning beautiful on the carriage. And um, this is probably about the hardest part of getting, getting the, the wheels right. And plus I've got another a Mack truck over there that I've been waiting about 25, 30 years to finish off and off. <laughs> As I said, I've got those wheels that are rubber, they don't look right. I'll make, I have to make up nine wheels for that Mack truck, which is another pretty good challenge. Next thing I've got to make is a dividing head so I can accurately drill holes in the wheel. So that's another little project that I'm sure while this coronavirus is running around, we can't travel, can't do anything. I'll certainly step up and, and do that. But this has been a fun project. It's, you know, it's had its ups and downs and all this, but I've been keen to uh, do it. I knew I had to do that as soon as I got that face plate that I had to, if I was going to put a big face plate one time, even then I knew that I had to cut this section out here so I can get the bigger pieces of wood and all this. So I've, I've created a lot of things in this. And actually this is more, more so a, a video for older people who, who, who want to be still active. And you know, I'm retired now and and moving on and it keeps your mind really active doing things like this and sitting around and and reading a book and then getting up halfway through the day and then having something to eat and then going and having to sleep in the afternoon gives you the will get up and have a go at something i'm glad i've, uh, I've finished this project it's been a wonderful project one of the things that I did find, yes, just moving on a little bit, is that when I had to put this piece of wood back in, I said, well, I wonder if I'll be able to set it up as pretty quick like I did in the younger days, because I'm a machinist by trade, and worked lays and whatnot for, and, uh, for many, many years. And I tell you what, it was just great to put the dial indicator on and, and reset it. And it worked pretty good, you know, there's a little bit of binding in the chuck, uh, but you can compensate that, no trouble at all, and uh, overall, work fine. Having the screws in through the chuck plate onto this piece of wood helped a lot, because I only loosened off two chuck jaws when I took this one out, 
And when I come to put it back in, I use the same two jaws to uh, do the adjustments. And I was only out probably about three or four hours, so it wasn't a big deal to really get it running spot on again. Once you've got a spot on there, the screws went exactly in the right spot anyway, so you know, you're laughing. So it was fun. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this. Just hang around and watch this old fellow as he battles on doing his little projects, having fun with lumps of rusty metal, creating something wonderful out of it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Those who are young or old, no matter where you come from, what country you come from, and enjoy the fun. Now I'm set up, grounds up some old security camera mounts, and they just work out fantastic quarter inch pitch there, straight into the GoPro. Five seconds and it's all set up. Work wonderful. I cleaned it up and put some paint on them so they don't rust. I've got three of those. Thanks.